would you do if you suddenly came into possession of a group of magical talking rodents that could sing? Hi chipmunks, wanna watch a TV show? Now I'd like to consider myself semi-aware of most movies and TV shows. I mean, I'm posting videos about movies and TV shows. I should be semi-qualified to talk about them. I've spent most of my formative years in front of a screen, so surely I know a thing or two. Although recently one of you asked me to talk about Alvin and the Chipmunks and to study the history of their friends franchise when I realized I've never actually watched Alvin and the Chipmunks. Sure, I knew of the franchise growing up, but I never actually watched or went out of my way to consume anything they did. It wasn't until one of you mentioned it where I realized I missed out on an entire franchise growing up. I don't know how I did that. And yes, that's simply all it takes for me to make a video is one of you to ask, hey, can you talk about this topic? And I'll talk about it. So I sat down and I researched these little rodent guys to answer the question, how did they succeed? In case you don't know, the main cast of characters includes the following quartet. There is Alvin, of course, namesake, he's the leader, he's the troublemaker. Then there's Simon, who's the smart intellectual brother. Then there's the little guy, Theodore, who's just, he's just a baby, guys. And these three chipmunks are being raised by their father figure, David, or Dave. These chipmunks have been singing their way through hijinks and goofs for 65 years. The history of this franchise was actually kind of interesting to dive into and see how they were able to easily adapt and maneuver through trends and things changing in media. The first official appearance of the chipmunks came in the year 1958 with the Christmas song, the chipmunk song, Christmas don't be late. That wasn't a mouthful at all. However, eight months earlier came the song The Witch Doctor, which I'm sure all of you have heard at one point or another. It's really repetitive and annoying, and I might play a snippet here. I might not though. Girl, he told me what to do. He said that. This song featured a lot of sped up vocals that would eventually become synonymous with the chipmunks. For some reason, these songs were both instant hits and they hit the top of the Billboard Hot 100 charts and stayed there for four weeks. These songs would also go on to win three Grammys, so people loved the sped up vocals. This initial spike in audiences led for the chipmunks to go on and have the career that they did. <laughs> The Alvin Show was the very first iteration of Alvin, Theodore, and Simon's story. Premiering in 1961, this sort of established what the chipmunks would eventually become. It gave them their signature colors, their names, everything, really. Something I found interesting while researching this franchise was that the names of the characters all came from very real people in Rog Basarian Sr.'s life. Okay, so I don't know why I was fighting for my life so much to say this. The name is Ross Bagdasarian, both the originator of Alvin and the Chipmunks and his son who took over the franchise. They're both Ross Bagdasarian. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. The Chipmunks' dad's name of Dave came from Ross's stage name, and the Chipmunks' names all were studio executives who were on the record label for the Chipmunks. It got cancelled after its first season, however, it kept staying on the air and eventually was cycled into the Saturday morning cartoons that would appear during this time. The low ratings, however, did not get in the way of the Chipmunks' success. They ended up releasing a ton of music during this time. They had 52 musical segments in this TV series. And all the music that they released was reflecting the trends of music during that time, including covers of very, very popular songs. The primary focus of the Chipmunks during this time period was to just keep releasing music that was up until the passing of Rob Sr. in 1972. Since he was voicing not only the Chipmunks, but their manager Dave, this sort of left the series in a state of limbo. They didn't know which direction to take this franchise in. The franchise ended up moving to his son, Ross Bagdasarian Jr. After the Chipmunks had moved to NBC in 1983, they were able to start their second series. <laughs> This was a much softer version of the original cartoon, both vocally and just general content. And because of that change, it was very well received at the time. 
This series was an instant hit and it aired for eight seasons up until 1990. This series also very much introduced what the dynamic was between the brothers and gave them their solid personality traits. It also introduced the Chipettes, who are the feminine version of the chipmunks and it showed all the hijinks and goofs they got into. During the time of this TV show, there was also a bunch of little projects that were coming out focused on the chipmunks. In 1985, there was a live show called Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Amazing Computer, which was nothing short of haunting. I don't know why, but every iteration of the chipmunks as puppets terrifies me. It unsettles me. Nothing looks real about them, and I know they're cartoons, but they're still terrifying. In addition to these two projects, they also had a movie come out during this time called The Chipmunks Adventures in 1987 that focused on all the chipmunks traveling around the world again, singing, getting into hijinks, the usual. Then in 1988, the show's title kind of shift to the chipmunks to include both the chipettes and the chipmunks in the title. So it was no longer just Alvin and his chipmunks. It was all of them. And despite this title change, no one seemed to have a negative reaction to it. They were still singing big songs. They were still wearing their more contemporary outfits and they were still getting into hijinks. In 1990, the show title changed again to The Chipmunks Go to the Movies, which was each episode kind of spoofed a popular movie or franchise during that time. Doing this allowed Alvin and the Chipmunks to keep maintaining momentum in the pop culture world, but it's odd to me that technically the same series, it just they keep changing the title. I feel like it would have made more sense to just start a new series that was doing this, but they just kept changing things. I'm not a producer on any TV shows, but I feel like that's that's an interesting decision that I've never really heard of before, a constant rebranding of a franchise while it's still actively running. Despite the cancellation of this TV show, the chipmunks still were never brought down. They had a documentary released about the 50 years that they had put into this franchise. They also had music to always fall back on, so they were really set. This is one of the shortest stints, I think, of the Chipmunks. In 1996, Universal Pictures came into acquisition of Alvin and the Chipmunks. But they didn't have many releases during this time because of an inevitable breach of contract and they had to stop making these characters. They produced several direct-to-video films during this time, but they were all very well received and people enjoyed bringing Alvin and the Chipmunks to this new generation. It was very interesting to see that no matter what format the chipmunks came in, people were eager to receive them. But like I said, this could not last forever because in 2000, Ross Jr. sued Universal because they had destroyed American icons in his words and thus they couldn't make any more movies. But not all of Alvin and the Chipmunks projects were well received because there is this one that always falls through the cracks it seems like. And that movie would be Little Alvin and the Mini Monks. This is a straight to video movie that once again has horrifying puppetry of the chipmunks. This movie held a very similar puppetry style to Bear in the Big Blue House, Sesame Street, Between the Lions, and so it fit right in with what was in the mainstream and what was popular in terms of children's TV during that time. From what I can find, this is the least popular version of Alvin and the Chipmunks. It seems like no one's really seen or heard of it. I mean, just looking at the IMDb page, it has the least amount of reviews by a lot. But I guess every franchise needs its failure, and that failure was the Mini Monks. But moving on to a version of the Chipmunks that I feel like we're going to recognize, in 2007 we got the live action Alvin and the Chipmunks that took the nation by storm. <laughs> After seeing the success of taking an older TV show and turning it into a live action movie like the Scooby-Doo franchise did, the people behind Alvin and the Chipmunks and 20th Century Fox decided, we can do that too. And the success that they saw from this movie was insane. This was the ninth highest grossing film of the year and it made 360 
million dollars in worldwide box offices. And of course, because of this success, they did not stop there. They went on and released three more movies. Let me just give you some numbers really quick on how successful they were. The second movie, The Squeakle, made 443.1 million in box offices. The third one, Chipwrecked, made 342.7 million in box offices. And Road Chip, the last one, made 234.8 million in box offices. That's a lot of money. And to put it in a way that might make sense for us to understand, because I have no concept of how much that money is, but I researched movies in 2023 that were, I thought, popular to see how they compare. We had No Hard Feelings that made 85 million at box offices. The Little Mermaid made 567.6 million at box offices. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny made 379 million at box offices. So hopefully that helps you figure out how popular these movies were. And of course, there's other factors that are contributing to those lower numbers in 2023 popular movies. For example, there's a ton of streaming services now that you can just watch whatever on. Also, I think it's more than fair to say that movie theaters haven't made a full recovery after the pandemic and all the lockdown protocols. However, let's talk about the plot of these movies really quick. The plot of the movies is roughly as follows. In the first one, the chipmunks essentially force Dave to make them famous because they're okay at singing. And then from there, the brothers are sticking together through thick and thin as their music career is taking off. Of course, they get up to mischief here and there, but at the end of the day, they're just lovable little guys. Speaking of mischief, did you know the chipmunks are on a no-fly list? <laughs> From what I could find online, it seems like the rationale behind this was the chipmunks ruined an air marshal's relationship, so he thought logically next steps were to put them on a no-fly list. I'm no air marshal, but that seems pretty logical to me. Anyway, looking at what made these movies actually successful, it seems like a huge part of it was the timing of these movies. The first two came out during the holiday season, which obviously led to a huge spike in box office profits. And the first movie soundtrack made it to number five on the US Billboard 200s list, so clearly it was the movies and the music that led to the chipmunk success. Because it's not just a movie, but it's a movie and a band, I think that that sort of boosts how many people the chipmunks are going to be able to reach. And since these films are formatted as a jukebox musical, they can put in as many songs as they want to to boost album popularity and to increase those sales. Looking after the live action movies, the franchise has been oddly quiet. There was going to be a fifth movie, but the voice actor who plays Alvin dropped out of the films and there were negative reviews about the first four, so they just decided to scrap the whole thing. There is currently a TV show running, though, on Nickelodeon called Alvin and the Chipmunks. Not to be confused with Alvin and the Chipmunks. Alvin is geared towards children and I think returns to that format of television that was popular in the 80s. Of course, they still have their personality traits in classic colors, but if you look at the animation style and writing, it's much more in the vein of Paw Patrol. This is also the first Chipmunks and Chipettes dual appearance on a TV show together since the 90s, which is pretty exciting. Once again, paralleling a new TV show to a more successful older version of the TV show is working. They're still pumping out episodes, and I think that it helps that Ross and his wife are still ultra involved in the franchise, with the exception of the live action movies to which they had very minimal involvement. Outside of that show, there still is a very active fan base, believe it or not. While researching for this video, I saw a lot of fan blogs that were talking about things that they wanted to see from future movies or future TV shows and just generally giving a lot of love and support to the chipmunks and where they are now. I believe that a huge part of the chipmunk's success was the fact that they have high-pitched voices. This is, of course, a very, very divisive pillar in the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise. 
a lot of the negative reviews that I found was talking about how annoying the voices are and that's part of the reason why I didn't really watch the franchise was because I didn't like how the voices sounded. But I think part of the appeal of having high-pitched voices is comparable to watching videos at a faster speed. With our attention spans decreasing because of the accessibility of so many different kinds of media and entertainment, I think having those high-pitched voices can keep audiences engaged in within the content. And this may be controversial, but I think the music genre Nightcore is heavily inspired by the Chipmunks. For those who may not know, Nightcore is a genre of music that became really popular in the 2010s that is just sped up songs and sped up vocals. You would probably recognize it from something like TikTok, where it's a lot of the edit audios or the POV audios. I think it's more than fair to attribute this style of music making, though, to Alvin and the Chipmunks. Had Ross Sr. not sat down and sped up the vocals in Witch Doctor, who knows where this type of vocal effect would be? Of course, I'm not a music person. I'm not super involved in the world of music. I like listening to music, but at the end of the day, I am much better about speaking on film and TV and theater, not music. But I would say the sped up vocals are derivative from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Another thing that contributed to their success that I brought up a few times in this video was the fact that they weren't just making movies or TV shows. They also made music. They started as this band that then developed this extensive lore through TV shows and films. And this writing style is something that I think is still very rare to this day. I can't think of many bands who have a movie and TV show series to develop their lore, but the focus is music. I feel like typically the way things go is it's a movie or TV star that then starts to record music. It's not the other way around normally. Over the span of their career, they have 45 albums, 76 EPs and singles, and they've had four tours and have won a ton of awards for their music. Because they branched out of doing just TV shows and movies, they were able to reach significantly more people through music. Of course, making music means having more revenue, but I think because the Chipmunks were always covering popular songs and somehow made their way into the mainstream every single time they released an album, they were able to reach a ton of people. For example, I've never watched any of their movies, but I can very distinctly tell you a time between 2008 and through 2015 where I was hearing their music all the time when I was in public. It's one of those things where you didn't have to seek out the chipmunks because if you went into a mall, you would hear the chipmunks music. Unlike Scooby-Doo that had several different TV shows coming out because they were trying to figure out what the formula was and the style that was going to be best received, the Chipmunks only had a few projects that were very, very successful, I think partially because of the music and also because the family has always been very, very involved in it. Despite being detached from the franchise, I had a great time trying to figure out why the Chipmunks have been so successful in our pop culture. Sure, it's not as popular as it was from 2008-ish to 2015, but it's still very active. I think it's one of those franchises that is always going to bring in that new, younger generation. So while the older generations are growing out of the shenanigans the chipmunks get into, there is this younger generation that will continue watching those shows and continue listening to their music. Overall, I firmly believe that the music is what made the chipmunks so successful. Had they not had the music, I don't think that they would be where they are today. But I'll leave that up to you guys to talk about in the comment section down below, and if you have anything that you'd like me to talk about, just let me know. I'm curious how many of you have even watched the franchise, or what you've watched within the franchise, or hell, even what songs you remember of theirs. Let's talk about it down below. If you watched until the end of the video, dude, thank you so much. I know the last video I posted was a haul to get through, so I thought to give you guys like just a little, little short one, a little treat. If you have anything that you'd like to see me talk about, just let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk about, I'll talk about anything. If it can be watched, it can be talked about. I'll send a little smooch your way and I'll see you next time.